So in this video I'm going to show you how to create a simple load balance worker pool that talks to a single uh, database server as seen in, in the picture. Um, you can see that each of my workers as well as the database um, has two IP addresses. The first IP address is a public internet routable IP address and the one in the bottom is a private address that Amazon's assigns to all the instances that you create on the same uh, virtual private cluster. Um, by default, when you create an instance, it, it gets assigned to the default virtual private cluster. Um, you can use these addresses um, internally uh, for the instances to, to talk to each other. And another nice benefit that they have is that uh, when an instance gets suspended and resume, uh, the private address remains the same. So uh, whereas the public address uh, will will change. So of course um, your own instances will have uh, different addresses and you'll have to, to adjust. So uh, to get us started the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to configure the database server uh, so that it can actually accept um, connections from other instances and we're also going to configure MySQL so that it expects connections from outside uh, its own host. Uh, we'll then um, uh, configure uh, two workers. We'll make sure that uh, the workers can uh, actually access the database. And once we're convinced that all is good and working, we'll add the load balancer. So to uh, implement this architecture, we're going to need three instances. I have already started them. I'm actually using the MI that includes the, um, the sample solution for for a1 but you know obviously you can use your your own code um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to configure uh, the database make sure that it allows incoming connections so I'm going to launch um, uh, the security group uh, editor and uh, we need to make sure that there are two rules in there the first rule allows me to SSH from um, my laptop basically from anywhere and I added the second rule that is going to allow um, it's, it's MySQL connections so by default MySQL listens on port 3306 uh, and we are limiting connections only to those hosts that happen to be on the same private network so if you remember from uh, you know that diagram all my instances are on the 172 30.0 uh, subnet and, and this will make sure that you know only uh, instances in that subnet can, can actually communicate. So next thing we need to do is we need to actually connect to the instance itself and we need to configure MySQL so that it allows connections from outside the host because by default MySQL will not do so. So let me just uh, very quickly connect to our database instance choose from the three four one eight um, initially we'll just make sure that MySQL is running you can see we, we were able to connect we can you know see for instance what databases are available. Now unfortunately uh, if you try to connect from a process that's not on running on the same host MySQL will, will refuse the connection at, at, um, by default so we need to actually modify it so that it accepts uh, remote connections and to do that you need to um, change the MySQL configuration file which is in etc MySQL and then mysql.conf.d uh, if you uh, ls, you'll see that there are two files, uh, one that's pretty much empty, and the one that we care about is this myconfiguration.conf, mysql.conf. Um, that file is owned by root, so to edit it, we're going to have to use the sudo command to give us uh, sudo privileges, and in this case I'm going to be using emacs. Um, I'm going to open the file, mysql.conf, and if I just scroll down, I'm going to look for a variable called bind address and this tells the server 
uh, which interface to accept connections from. So I just commented it there. Um, by default, it only accepts uh, loopback connections, you know, uh, basically connections from processes on the same host. And we don't want that. We want it to accept connections from other hosts in the same private subnet. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually give it uh, the, you know, the private, um, you know, interface. So we just save this and we exit. Next thing we need to do is we need to actually restart MySQL. So as uh, sudo, uh, we can use the service command. Um, if you just type MySQL, it will tell you what commands it accepts. So for instance, if I say status, it will tell us that MySQL is, is, is running and I can stop it if I want. And now if I ask for the status, it will tell you that, you know, the server has stopped. And now I can start it again. And we are going to check that it's all working by connecting to it again. And it should all be fine. Uh, now, the, for this particular database that I'm using, there is a built-in provided uh, user called ECE1779, and the password is, is secret, and you can see that it all works. I mean, for a local connection, you know, it shouldn't have made any, any difference. Now, what we're going to do next is we are going to connect from one of the workers. So, if I go back here, I well, can check that, you know, what are the IP addresses of my workers. So, for my worker one, you know, that's the remote address. I'm actually going to connect to it. Seven twenty one seventy six seventy. All right, and I can see whether I can connect to uh, the first thing I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to connect to the database server of the remote, you know, that remote host. So it's one seventy two thirty point zero point twenty one. I'm going to be using the user we have been using so far, and ask for a password. And if all goes well, let's see, H. There we go. Sorry, it's uh, lowercase h, it's not. Uh, and you can see I've connected. So I'm now connected to the remote database, which is exactly what we wanted. So next thing we're going to do is I'm going to configure my application so that it actually um, talks to the remote database. Uh, so I'm using the A1 solution and uh, I'm seeding to the app directory and there is a file called configuration. So I'm going to just edit it. You can see that by default it tries to use a local database which is not what we want because then each worker will modify its own database, and that's really not what we want. We want them all to talk to the same database. So I just modified it. And uh, once I've done that, I can actually just run it. Um, now, uh, the way I'm going to be running it is by using uh, G Unicorn. So there is a file called run dot sh that will start unicorn for me. I've actually configured it uh, so that it starts on port 80 as opposed to the default, you know, port 5000. Um, unicorn as opposed to the default um, Flask server is a multi-threaded server, meaning that it can actually handle multiple connections and you can actually specify how many uh, connections you're, how many workers you're willing to, to create. And in this case, we're using the worker class G event, uh, um, which uh, behaves nicely with the Amazon uh, Elastic Load Balancer. So we're going to just start this thing. And uh, when you start it, it's going to complain that you don't have permissions. And, um, um, and the reason for that is because we're trying to use, um, in this case, it complained about this error, this, this 
log file, but they can just remove it and then it will complain about something else. Um, just remove the log files. And if I start it again that way, um, oh, it actually, uh, no, it failed. And the reason why it failed is because we're trying to listen to um, port 80, which is a restricted port. So what you want to do is you want to run it uh, with sudo. And then it will actually work. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check whether this worker is in fact accessible. Um, so we're going to try to connect to it. And as we said, it's on port 80. So you can see it's actually working. I had been using it before, and that's why it has me logged in. But you know, you should probably get the login screen. Um, there is a built-in user login test password secret, and you can see that you know it has a few um, images, and this is actually working pretty pretty fast. So. Um, just to summarize what we've done so far is we started this worker, we configured this database server and the worker is talking to that database server. The next thing we need to do is we need to replicate um, this for the second worker. And I'm going to do that uh, very, very quickly. So again, all that I'm doing is changing the configuration so that, in this case, I'm connected to the second worker and I'm going to get it to, I mean, talk to the same, the same database. Just removing the old logs. And again, just uh, for peace of mind, I'm going to connect to the second server just to make sure that it all works well. OK. And it does. All right, uh, the reason why I'm able to connect to these two workers is because they have been configured to allow connections from my machine. So if you look at the workers, they all share the same security group. And let's look at what's in that security group. So they are allowing, let's just take a quick look. Uh, the part that matters is this. So in this case, that happens to be uh, my IP address. Uh, you have to configure it to your own IP address, uh, or otherwise, obviously, it won't work. Uh, I won't let you even SSH into the worker, and definitely won't let you connect to, to port 80. All right, so just to recoup what we've done so far, we created these two workers, and we created a database server, and we made sure that we started the application in each of the workers, and that when we connect to the application, you know, they're talking to, to the data, uh, to the one database server. So now what's left to do is to actually hook these two workers to um, the elastic load balancer. And to do that, the first thing we need to do is we need to actually modify the security group of the workers so that they uh, accept connections from um, the load balancer. And the load balancer will be on the same subnet as your instances, and therefore you need to add a rule here. Now, uh, I'm running my web servers 
my flash servers on port 80 if you are running them on port 5000 you're going to have to configure that for 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 port 5000 in my case I'm, I'm i'm doing it on for port 80 and i'm saying that you know you can also connect to port 80 if you happen to be running on on, on this on, on this subnet okay actually this is even broader it's anything that's in 172.30 and that's where my load balancer uh, will be 